Hi, welcome to Planetary Calendars, Astro Portraits. I'm Ralph Demetrius, one of the astrologers. The portrait today is actually part of our Cancerian, famous Cancerian series, and it's Meryl Streep, uh, one of America's greatest living artists and actors, of course. Uh, born June 22nd, 1949, a Wednesday, at 8.05 a.m. at Summit, New Jersey. Now, this, of course, would be daylight savings time, so it's plus four hours. Interestingly, the same hospital, probably, where my son Julian was born, so obviously a place where great people are born. Now, that date, June 22nd, this is the, where people would say, oh, I think I'm born on the cusp. You know, in other words, they're not sure, are they born in Cancer, or are they born in Gemini? But no, no, no. You are either one or the other, okay? You're either in one door or in the other, you're in the other door, and she is at zero degrees cancer. Now, those first degrees in the cardinal signs, first degree of Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, have a lot of leverage because they're action points. You know, the cardinal signs are action. They, they take action. They move things forward. Zero degrees cancer is a very powerful point. It is the summer solstice. So she was born on the longest day of the year. Obviously, potent power there. She is also born with Uranus, the planet of disruption and excitement at zero degrees cancer, what's called a partile conjunction with the sun. So this person was electrified from the beginning very possible that on the day that she was born, something unusual happened besides a baby being born, which is not that unusual. Um, she has Juno very close to the sun at 12 degrees, the marriage asteroid, and Venus at 18 degrees. Now, Venus is not conjunct the sun, but when you have Venus even the same sign with the sun, it does give a person great charm and a, a great sense of natural personal beauty. And it's Cancer, so it's feminine beauty. She has Leo rising. Okay, so Leo, who loves being on stage, so she was a natural for the dramatic arts. She has uh, Mars and Mercury in Gemini. So it shows a talent with language. They're also conjunct the part of fortune where she makes her money. In the 11th house, the house of technology, of the big picture. So this is a person who has natural talent with language. She has the moon in Taurus highly elevated. Once again, a feminine sign. So she has the sun and the moon, both in feminine signs, with Venus in the same sign as her sun. The moon in Taurus, Taurus is Venus's ruling sign. It's feminine sign, right? So this is the moon exalted, the best friend of Venus and Venus's sign. And to make it even more entertaining, Venus and the moon are in a pretty close sex style. So they're like cousins. They just naturally relate well. They're the favorite playmates. They work really well. It gives her personality a tremendous sense of femininity. There's no point at which when you meet Meryl Streep where you don't feel her femininity. Now, that Mars and Mercury in Gemini are very strong because Mercury is in the rulership position as well. The, but the external rulership position. But Mercury is always a little androgynous because it's very intellectual, you know, so it's playful. So people who meet her are surprised that she's very playful in her personality. The Leo rising is the fire in her chart and it's the dominant fire in her chart. What's interesting is that close to the horizon is Pallas Athena, which is the warrior goddess. And one of the things about her personality is that she has, in her role, she's played very strong women. You know, heroine women, you know, women who step out. She played the Iron Lady, um, you know, the, the Prime Minister of England. Um, she's played a lot of roles like that where she's played very significant, important people, women who stood out and stepped up and were champions for other people. You know, that's that palace, Athena, in Leo rising. It also shows tremendous skills as an actress. The ability to be dramatic, to understand the drama in the story. Now, there's a cool dynamic here. She's born with the sun in the 12th house, 
We have found this so many times in people who are in the movies, especially. And we're not sure so much with theater, but in the movies. Why? The 12th house, we always relate to houses are places. So the 12th house is, among other things, the studio, the theater, the place of make-believe, the place of imagination. Um, there's some uh, Ron Howard, a well-known actor, but a very famous director, is a 12th house native. Jodie Foster, we did portraits of both of them, another 12th house native. Uh, a lot of actors are 12th house natives, and it's that ability to um, really step into a make-believe world. And she has the Sun, Uranus, Juno, and Venus there. And that Uranus really is helpful because it means working with a large group of people. It's highly electrified. We really relate Uranus to electrification. And, you know, there's no place quite as electrified as a, um, a television studio or a movie studio. There's equipment all around you. The entire thing is an electronic medium, ultimately. When you go to a theater, you're not watching the person. You're watching an electronic representation or electrical rep representation and chemical representation of that person on the screen. So, you know, Uranus and Neptune, Neptune for chemicals. Now, she has the moon in the 10th house. Now, realize, here you have the sun in rulership, the moon in rulership, Mercury in rulership. You have Venus in Cancer, which is not a rulership position, but it's a strong position in, in Cancer, especially so because it's sextiled by its ruler. The moon is the ruler of Cancer, is sex styling it. It's giving a supportive hand. It empowers the Venus. The Venus is in what's called the Gogolon spot. This is a direct, this is basically clockwise from the angles. It's especially powerful, we find, at the ascendant and at the midheaven. It's, a, it's about 20, or 20 degrees, 20, 25 degrees clockwise from the angle. Her rising is two degrees Leo. So that brings it to uh, about 18 degrees, 20 degrees of Cancer. Her Venus is at 18. So her Venus is right there in the Gogolon spot. It's got a lot of leverage, that tremendous femininity. It's also Venus in Cancer. 18 degrees Cancer, 5 degrees away from America's 13 degree Cancer sun. She is the epitome of the American woman in many ways. Of course people, we, people like her. We relate to her, which is amazing because this is a tremendously talented person, much more talented than most of us, right, in terms of her field. And yet we relate to her. We connect with her. You know, the Cancer Sun, the Mother, the Taurus Moon. Let's go out to lunch together. We'll feed you. We'll find a great restaurant. These are all very relatable skills. What's interesting is that one of her first very famous films was um, Sophie's Choice. And for the movie, she learned to speak, I believe it was Polish, right? I mean, how many of us, unless we're going to marry someone who's from Poland, are going to learn the, the Polish language, unless you're a diplomat or you're going to marry someone from there? But she learned Polish for that role, so she could do it very authentically. Mars and Mercury in Gemini. Languages conjunct the part of fortune, where you make your money, her skill with languages, her skill with accents, her skill with just speech. When she did um, uh, Thatcher for the Iron Lady, here you have an American actress playing the Prime Minister of England. With all the actors and actresses you have in England, they choose an American actress to play her. Her accent was so Margaret Thatcher. When you watched her, it was hard to tell that this was not Margaret Thatcher. You got a sense that Meryl Streep did Margaret Thatcher better than Margaret Thatcher does Margaret Thatcher. I mean, it was such a fantastic performance. It was so authentic that you felt, was this really acting or was this a documentary? I mean, the skill level. Why? Where do we have our natural skills? Where do we have our natural talents? The second house. Second house is where we have our natural talents. People later on say, it's our money. It's where we keep our money. Yeah, it's our, our bank. It's our resources, our, our real estate. But it's also our natural talents. What does she have there? She has four bodies there. The most important one is Saturn and Virgo. Saturn at one degree Virgo conjunct the star Regulus. 
the royal star, the heart of the lion. Tremendous energy there. Hard, hard, hard work. Saturn in Virgo, developing the skill, the craftsmanship of being a thespian. That's her greatest resource. She really devoted herself to that. Conjunct it with, in the same degree, one degree, is Ceres. It's also her ability to shepherd the people around her. She's very good as part of a team because she understands how people like to work together. She has a great talent for that. She also has Hygieia there, and she has, um, oh, I'm forgetting the name of it. I'll show, I'll put it in the little text underneath. But it's actually a nodal point, but it tells you about um, uh, likability. And once again, when she's shepherding you along and she's kind of nudging you, making sure you're ch eating your chicken soup, she's very charming about it. Now, she has Neptune in the third house in Libra, which once again is that great imagination, the ability to speak from the imagination. And interestingly, she has Jupiter in Aquarius, at zero degrees Aquarius, in the seventh house, directly opposite the rising. So right at the descendant, she has this ability to make really good partnerships, powerful, powerful partnerships with, um, with people who are influential, especially in the media, Aquarius. Aquarius relates very strongly to the media. So the whole chart is lined up over on the east side. You know, the eastern part of the chart, the chart part of personal energy, except for that Jupiter, which is in the most powerful point in the Western Hemisphere, right at the descendant. So that becomes kind of the spout, in other words, her ability to work as part of a large team, to work in partnership. I mean, she hasn't, I don't think she's ever done a, a one-woman show that I can recall of. And I'm a little younger than her, but I know her career fairly well. All of her stuff has been part of an ensemble with a group of people. And she's really prospered in the movies, which is the largest cooperation you could possibly imagine in terms of the creative arts. The number of people involved in the movie are extraordinary. So that becomes her spout. And it's really beautifully designed because it's about 90 degrees from not quite of the moon. It's a, about a little more than 90 degrees from the Neptune, which are the two endpoints. So it acts as a real spout. It really allows her full expression. Now, at this point, you think, oh my gosh, this woman has everything. She's got beauty. She's got talent. She's got the ability to work well with other people. What's her particular? Everyone, we all have some thing. Know what her thing is? She has an exact quincunx from her Jupiter to her sun, which means she really does not understand where her good luck comes from. She's just clueless about that. She just has no way of recognizing. Jupiter has a lot to do with our good luck. It has a lot to do with our um, ability to expand our horizons to her sun. And it squares kind of generally, but not very closely to the moon. So it's really to the sun. One of the dynamics of this is that people who have this position often feel like their success isn't good enough. You know, oh, well, I would, I would, I was, that one, no, I was just lucky. That was, that just turned out well because I was lucky. Or, you know, I'm not, I really, what, yeah, I'm doing this, but what I'd really like is to direct. And you know, that's really what I've always wanted to do. Or, you know, there's some place in here in which she doesn't feel like her success is really as good as she would like it to be. Now, I realize having all the Oscars on the wall and all these other awards might convince her otherwise, but probably not. Probably like all of us, she has some place that, you know, where we just have a blind spot. And that's her particular blind spot. She never thinks that her work is really as good as it should be, or her success is as full as it should be. Some place. Which is interesting, and it probably has to do with her, because it's in the seventh house, it probably has a bit to do with her, her partnerships. She may feel like she hasn't been able to devote as much to her partnerships as she would like to, and because the sun's in the 12th house, it may feel like she hasn't been able to pursue her spiritual goals and her, her personal creative goals as much as she want, has wanted to. She's always had to kind of sublimate that for the desires of the director and of the writer and of the, you know, of the partners. 
So that's Merle Streep's chart. Really fascinating. I mean, a tremendously successful person and a very, very powerful chart. Remarkable woman. Make sure you come back and see our next portrait. I realize this one ran a little long. I tried to keep them shorter. We do those on Tuesdays. And of course, on Fridays, we do our astro, port, our astro forecast for the coming week. You can find those at planetarycalendar.com. And of course, you can find them at Planetary Calendar Astrology with Ralph and Lonnie on YouTube. Until next time, be well. <laughs>